Hello there, this is Jocelyn Varkish again, joining you from New York City. I will be the course moderator for this course, Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, Part 3. If you have already watched Part 1 and 2 of the series, you don't need an introduction. For those of you who are starting with this session, join us as GBRI Senior Research Associate Sarah Spencer explores the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals analyzes each goal and invites each of us to be part of this historic moment. The UN does not need an introduction. Programs and policies backed by the UN have shaped the world we live in for the past half century. The latest program, which has been in development for last four years, is the release of the Sustainable Development Goals. By 2030, these goals aim to combat the world's most wicked and pressing problems, including poverty, hunger, and climate change, among many others. Listed here are the course objectives. By the end of this course, you will be able to understand the UN's contributions to social equality, human wellness, and the environment, and the process used to develop the goals. Identify each sustainable development goals analyze the targets of each goal, understand how governments, businesses, and individuals can have an impact on achieving the goals. Last but not the least, we will also learn how to take immediate participatory action in favor of the goals. Since this course series runs over three hours, we broke it into three parts so that users may watch it on their own schedule. The series as a whole is approved for CE and each part is separately approved for CE hours as well. Under part one, we will introduce SDGs and go over SDGs one through six. By SDGs, I mean sustainable development goals. SDGs one through six address issues, namely poverty, hunger, health and well-being, education, gender equality, and clean water. Under part two, Sarah will go over SDGs seven through 12 that address issues related to clean energy, economic growth, innovation and infrastructure, inequalities, cities and communities, and consumption and production. And under part three, We'll go over SDGs 13 through 17 that address issues related to climate change, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and partnership for the goals. Under part three, we will also look at extra actions for governments, businesses, building professionals, and how each of us can participate in realizing these goals by 2030. Here is the course agenda for part 3 or the course you are watching now. There are four sections. Under section 1 we will analyze sustainable development goals 13 through 17. SDGs 13 through 17 address issues related to climate change, life below water, life on land, peace, justice and partnership for the goals. Section 2 is extra actions where Sarah will go over the actions governments, businesses, professionals, and citizens. Now we will go over Goal 13, Take Urgent Action to Combat Climate Change and Its Impacts. Every country in the world is seeing the drastic effects of climate change, some more than others. On average, the annual losses just from earthquakes, tsunamis, tropical cyclones, and flooding count in the hundreds of billions of dollars. We can reduce the loss of life and property by helping more vulnerable regions, such as landlocked countries and island states, become more resilient. The impact of global warming is getting worse. We're seeing more storms, more droughts, and more extremes than ever before. It is still possible, with political will and technological measures, to limit the increase in global mean temperature to 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and thus avoid the worst effects of climate change. 
the Sustainable Development Goals lay out a way for countries to work together to meet this urgent challenge. Climate change is a reality, and if we continue business as usual, climate-related natural disasters will continue to increase in scale and quantity. This can already be seen now, with the number of hurricanes, floods, drought, and wildfires increasing steadily. Target 13.1 has the goal to strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related hazards and natural disasters in all countries. Target 13.2 calls to integrate climate change measures into national policies, strategies, and planning. Much of the thinking to date on how to address climate change has focused on incrementally reducing emissions, such as the commitment to reduce emissions to 5% below 1990 levels under the Kyoto Protocol. These incremental improvements are important first steps. But successful climate change management calls for a new development paradigm that integrates climate change into strategies and plans, and that links policy setting with the financing of solutions. Target 13.3. Improve education, awareness raising, and human and institutional capacity on climate change, including mitigation, adaptation, impact reduction, and early warning. Education and awareness raising play an essential role in increasing the climate change adaptation and mitigation capacities of communities by enabling individuals to make informed decisions. Education helps learners understand the causes and consequences of climate change, prepares them to live with the impacts of climate change, and empowers women and men to adopt more sustainable lifestyles. Target 13A Implement the commitment undertaken by developed country parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. This has a goal of mobilizing jointly $100 billion annually by 2020 from all sources to address the needs of developing countries in the context of meaningful mitigation actions and transparency on implementation. Also, fully operationalize the Green Climate Fund through its capitalization as soon as possible. The Green Climate Fund was established with a mission to advance the goal of keeping the temperature increase on our home planet below 2 degrees Celsius. The fund is a unique global initiative to respond to climate change by investing into low emission and climate resilient development. The GCF was established by 194 governments to limit or reduce greenhouse gas emissions in developing countries and to help adapt vulnerable societies to the unavoidable impacts of climate change. Target 13b. Promote mechanisms for raising capacity for effective climate change-related planning and management in least developed countries and small island developing states. Also, place a focus on women, youth, and local and marginalized communities. The United Nations Development Program supports countries to formulate integrated climate change strategies that will assist national and subnational governments to develop and strengthen policies, institutions, capacities and knowledge for integrated green, low emission and climate resilient development. It also involves utilizing a full range of supportive financing mechanisms to support that development. So where do we fit in all this? Let's start with companies. Companies can be part of this solution by improving their energy efficiency and committing to decarbonize their operations and supply chains. Additionally, they can reduce the carbon footprint of their products, services, and processes, and set emissions targets in line with climate science. Scaling up investment in the development of innovative and inclusive low-carbon, climate-smart products and services will certainly help the cause as well. Another way companies can take action is by building resilience in operations, supply chains, and the communities in which they operate. Resilience means being able to adapt quickly to any changes that may result as a result of climate change. Companies can also join the UN's Caring for Climate initiative, which helps companies and business leaders to advance practical solutions, share experiences, inform public policy, and shape public attitudes about climate change. Sustainable Development Goal 14 conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. 
The oceans make human life possible. Their temperature, their chemistry, their currents, and their life forms. For one thing, more than 3 billion people around the world depend on marine and coastal diversity for their livelihoods. But today we are seeing nearly a third of the world's fish stocks overexploited. That's not a sustainable way of life. Even people who live nowhere near the ocean can't live without it. Oceans absorb about 30% of the carbon dioxide that humans produce, but we're producing more carbon dioxide than ever before, and that makes the oceans more acidic, 26% more, since the start of the Industrial Revolution. Our trash doesn't help either. 13,000 pieces of plastic litter on every square kilometer of ocean. Sounds bad, right? Don't despair. The Sustainable Development Goals indicate targets for managing and protecting life below water. Target 14.1. By 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activities, including marine debris and nutrient pollution. 80% of pollution to the marine environment comes from the land. One of the biggest sources is called nutrient pollution, which is caused from stormwater runoff of fertilizers used in lawns and agriculture that make their way to the sea. This causes excessive algae growth and leads to ecosystem shutdown. Target 14.2. By 2020, sustainably manage and protect marine and coastal ecosystems in order to avoid significant adverse impacts, including by strengthening their resilience. Also, take action for their restoration in order to achieve healthy and productive oceans. Oceans, seas, and coastal areas experience an increased frequency and intensity of climate extremes, including stronger hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones. They are also subject to ocean acidification, sea level rise, and fluctuations in ocean currents and salinity. These changes will be felt not only along coastlines, but inland as well, due to the widespread influence of ocean currents on weather systems. Target 14.3 addresses ocean acidification and calls to minimize and address the impacts of ocean acidification, including through enhanced scientific cooperation at all levels. Ocean acidification is the ongoing decrease in the pH of the Earth's oceans, caused by the uptake of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Studies have shown that a more acidic environment has a dramatic effect on some calcifying marine species, including oysters, clams, and sea urchins. When these shelled organisms are at risk, the entire food web may also be at risk. Today, more than a billion people worldwide rely on food from the ocean as their primary source of protein. Many jobs and economies in the U.S. and around the world depend on the fish and shellfish in our oceans. Target 14.4. By 2020, effectively regulate harvesting and end overfishing, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, and destructive fishing practices. Also, implement science-based management plans in order to restore fish stocks in the shortest time feasible, at least to levels that can produce maximum sustainable yield as determined by their biological characteristics. A total of almost 80% of the world's fisheries are fully to overexploited, depleted, or in a state of collapse. Worldwide, about 90% of the stocks of large predatory fish stocks are already gone. In the real world, all this comes down to serious problems. We are losing species as well as entire ecosystems. As a result, the overall ecological unity of our oceans are under stress and at risk of collapse. We are in risk of losing a valuable food source that many depend on for social, economical, or dietary reasons. Target 14.5 By 2020, conserve at least 10% of coastal and marine areas, consistent with national and international law, and based on the best available scientific information. This target will work to increase the amount of marine protected areas, or MPAs, which are marine sites such as sanctuaries, fisheries management areas, state conservation areas, and wildlife refuges established to protect habitats, endangered species, and to restore the health of marine ecosystems in areas jeopardized by habitat and species loss. Target 14.6. By 2020, 
prohibit certain forms of fisheries subsidies that contribute to overcapacity and overfishing, and eliminate subsidies that contribute to illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. Also, refrain from introducing new such subsidies. Recognize that appropriate and effective special and differential treatment for developing and least developed countries should be an integral part of the World Trade Organization fisheries subsidies negotiation. Many organizations have worked for many years to end subsidies that drive overcapacity and hinder sustainable marine management. But experts estimate that fishing subsidies of 15 to $35 billion are still used each year in the fisheries sector up to about a third of the total value of global fisheries. This is in spite of their negative impacts on resource sustainability. Proper management of fisheries, investment in sustainable aquaculture, and protection of key habitats can restore the productivity of the ocean and return benefits to billions of people in developing countries while ensuring future growth, food security, and jobs for coastal communities. Target 14.7 has a goal. By 2030, increase the economic benefits to small island developing states and least developed countries from the sustainable use of marine resources, including through sustainable management of fisheries, aquaculture, and tourism. Target 14A. Increase scientific knowledge, develop research capacity, and transfer marine technology. Take into account the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission criteria and guidelines on the transfer of marine technology in order to improve ocean health and enhance the contribution of marine biodiversity to the development of developing countries, in particular small island developing states and least developed countries. Marine technology refers to the instruments, equipment, vessels, processes, and methodologies required to produce and use knowledge to improve the study and understanding of the nature and resources of the ocean and coastal areas. In this sense, marine technology includes information and data on marine sciences and related marine operations and services in a user-friendly format. This type of technology and innovation are needed to exploit the huge wealth that can be derived from ocean and sea related activities in a sustainable manner. Target 14b. Provide access for small scale artisanal fishers to marine resources and markets. Small scale fisheries provide a host of social and economic benefits to communities, including livelihoods, food security and nutrition, poverty alleviation, and supporting local cultures. They contribute about half of the global catch, supplying food for local, national, and global markets. However, many of these fisheries and the communities which rely upon them are at risk, as we have discussed. Many small-scale fisheries lack scientific information and access to management resources, putting them at a disadvantage in sustainable management of their fisheries. Target 14C. Enhance the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources by implementing international law. As reflected in the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which provides the legal framework for the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources, and this is recalled in paragraph 158 of The Future We Want. You may remember that The Future We Want is a program designed to look ahead to the next 30 years and show what a sustainable future may look like. Paragraph 158 focuses specifically on the ocean as a tool for sustainable development. Establishing comprehensive, effective, and equitably managed systems of government-protected areas should be pursued to conserve biodiversity and ensure a sustainable future for the fishing industry. That's why, for ocean and deep sea areas, sustainability can be achieved through international cooperation to protect vulnerable habitats. Some steps we can all take toward ocean conservation are making ocean-friendly choices when buying products or eating food derived from the ocean. Consume only what you need and select certified products. You can check out certified sustainable seafood products from the Marine Stewardship Council their website has a finder tool to see what types and brands of seafood are available in your country. 
Saving small amounts of energy in your daily life, like taking public transport and unplugging your electronics, can help to reduce your carbon footprint, which is a major factor in contributing to rising sea levels. Try to minimize your plastic usage as much as possible, as this is a major contributor to ocean pollution. Organize beach cleanups on your local beaches. And most importantly, make sure to spread the message about how important marine life is and why we need to protect it. It's important to remember that one person can make a difference, but a motivated group of friends or coworkers can have a much greater impact. Now, let's get into goal 15. Protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. Humans and other animals rely on other forms of life on land for food, clean air, clean water, and as a means of combating climate change. Plant life makes up 80% of the human diet. Forests, which cover 30% of the Earth's surface, help keep the air and water clean and the Earth's climate in balance. That's not to mention they're home to millions of animal species. But the land and life on it are in trouble. Arable land is disappearing 30 to 35 times faster than it has historically. Deserts are spreading. Animal breeds are going extinct. We can turn these trends around. Fortunately, the Sustainable Development Goals aim to conserve and restore the use of terrestrial ecosystems such as forests, wetlands, drylands, and mountains by 2020. Target 15.1 By 2020, ensure the conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of terrestrial and inland freshwater ecosystems and their services, in particular, forests, wetlands, mountains, and drylands, in line with obligations under international agreements. Our ever-increasing demands for water, for agriculture, industry, hydropower, and household use are putting rivers, lakes, and wetlands under huge pressure. Pollution and the impact of climate change are excavating the situation. These are having a devastating effect on freshwater wildlife. Their numbers have declined by 35% since 1970, a greater decrease than for species living on land or at sea. While thousands of species of fish, animals, birds, and plants struggled to adapt and survive, people too faced increased flooding, lower crop yields, and declining fisheries. Target 15.2 By 2020, promote the implementation of sustainable management of all types of forests, halt deforestation, restore degraded forests, and sustainably increase afforestation and reforestation globally. Sustainable forest management is the management of forests according to the principles of sustainable development. Sustainable forest management has to keep the balance between three main pillars, ecological, economic, and socio-cultural. Successfully achieving sustainable forest management will provide integrated benefits to all, ranging from safeguarding local livelihoods to protecting the biodiversity and ecosystems provided by forests, reducing rural poverty, and mitigating some of the effects of climate change. Target 15.3 By 2030, combat desertification, restore degraded land and soil, including land affected by desertification, drought, and floods, and strive to achieve a land degradation neutral world. Desertification is the persistent degradation of dryland ecosystems by human activities including unsustainable farming, mining, overgrazing, and clear-cutting of land, and by climate change. Desertification is a global issue, with serious implications worldwide for biodiversity, eco-safety, poverty eradication, socioeconomic stability, and sustainable development. Drylands are extremely fragile. As they become degraded, the impact on people, livestock, and the environment can be devastating. Some 50 million people may be displaced within the next 10 years as a result of desertification and further land degradation. Target 15.4 By 2030, ensure the conservation of mountain ecosystems, including their biodiversity, 
in order to enhance their capacity to provide benefits that are essential for sustainable development. Until recently, mountain habitats have been largely protected because of their inaccessibility. As people have moved into the mountains to live, for recreation, and to obtain valuable resources such as timber, mountain ecosystems around the world have been subject to degradation and destruction from logging, tourism, and climate change. By this time tomorrow, as many as 200 of our planet's unique species will have gone extinct. The current rate of species extinction is at least 100 to 1,000 times higher than the expected natural rate because of destructed human activities. That's why Target 15.5 pledges to take urgent and significant action to reduce the degradation of natural habitats and halt the loss of biodiversity and, by 2020, protect and prevent the extinction of threatened species. Target 15.6 Promote fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources and promote appropriate access to such resources as internationally agreed. This target also addresses the Nagoya Protocol as we discussed under Goal 2. Whereas that target largely focused on genetics through agriculture, the more general guidelines for genetic resources are the focus of this target, whether from plant, animal, or microorganisms. They can be used for a variety of purposes, ranging from basic research to the development of products. Target 15.7, take urgent action to end poaching and trafficking of protected species of flora and fauna, and address both demand and supply of illegal wildlife products. The illegal wildlife trade has exploded to meet increasing demand for elephant ivory, rhino horns, and tiger products. Controlled by dangerous crime syndicates, wildlife is trafficked much like drugs or weapons. Wildlife criminals often operate with impunity making the trade a low-risk and high-profit business. Today, it is the fifth most profitable illicit trade in the world, estimated at up to $10 billion annually. Invasive species, or non-native plants and animals from other parts of the world, threaten native wildlife and ecosystems and are causing ecological havoc in many of our most sensitive habitats, pushing many of our native plants and animals to the brink of extinction. That's why Target 15.8 aims to introduce measures to prevent the introduction and significantly reduce the impact of invasive alien species on land and water ecosystems by 2020, as well as control or eradicate the priority species. Target 15.9. By 2020, integrate ecosystem and biodiversity values into national and local planning, development processes, poverty reduction strategies, and accounts. The values of biodiversity are not widely reflective in decision-making. This is true, for instance, in the context of development and poverty reduction strategies. Integrating and reflecting the contribution of biodiversity and the ecosystem services it provides in relevant strategies, policies, programs, and reporting systems is an important element in ensuring that the diverse values of biodiversity and the opportunities derived from its conservation and sustainable use are recognized and reflected in decision-making. Target 15A. Mobilize and significantly increase financial resources from all sources to conserve and sustainably use biodiversity and ecosystems. Evidence shows that biodiversity and ecosystem health are decreasing worldwide. In a world of constrained budgets and slow economic growth, the already limited public financing for biodiversity could be difficult to sustain, let alone expand. Recognizing the potential of ecosystems for economic and social growth and building on public-private partnerships to invest in natural wealth can help transform biodiversity conservation into an engine of growth a growth that is more inclusive and greener. Target 15b. Mobilize significant resources from all sources and at all levels to finance sustainable forest management and provide adequate incentives to developing countries to advance such management, including for conservation and reforestation. Progress on sustainable forest management is hindered by a lack of suitable financing. Many countries currently take an ad hoc approach to financing, 
using a small number of mechanisms such as grants and subsidies that often cover only a few activities. This opportunity has been seized by some countries that are now experimenting with innovative financing mechanisms. Target 15C Enhance global support for efforts to combat poaching and trafficking of protected species, including by increasing the capacity of local communities to pursue sustainable livelihood opportunities. The less value is placed on animals in the illegal trading system, the more people in local communities will be likely to develop sustainable work habits and livelihoods such as attaining skills or craftsmanship. Inevitably, we change the ecosystems we are a part of through our very presence, but we can make choices that either affirm diversity or devalue it. Some places to begin are recycling, eating locally based diets, consuming only what we need, and limiting energy usage through efficient heating and cooling systems. If you encounter any wildlife, be respectful and only take part in ecotourism opportunities that are responsibly and ethically run in order to prevent wildlife disturbance. Well-managed protected areas support healthy ecosystems, which in turn keep people healthy. It is therefore critical to secure the involvement of the local communities in the development and management of these protected areas. Moving on to Goal 16, promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. How can a country develop? How can people eat and teach and learn and work and raise families without peace? And how can a country have peace without justice, without human rights, without government based on the rule of law? Some regions of the world enjoy relative peace and justice and may come to take it for granted. Other regions seem to be plagued by armed conflict, crime, torture, and exploitation, all of which hinders their development. The goal of peace and justice is one for all countries to strive toward. The Sustainable Development Goals aim to reduce all forms of violence and propose that governments and communities find lasting solutions to conflict and insecurity. That means strengthening the rule of law, reducing the flow of illicit arms, and bringing developing countries more into the center of institutions of global governance. Violence causes more than 1.6 million deaths worldwide every year. More than 90% of these occur in low- and middle-income countries. Violence is one of the leading causes of death in all parts of the world for persons ages 15 to 44. That's why Target 16.1 aims to significantly reduce all forms of violence and related death rates everywhere. Target 16.2 End abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all other forms of violence against and torture of children. Because child trafficking is lucrative and often linked with criminal activity and corruption, it is hard to estimate how many children suffer. Trafficking and exploitation are an increasing risk to children around the world. Often, they are trafficked for commercial sexual exploitation, like prostitution, or for labor such as domestic servitude, agricultural work, factory work, mining, or child soldiering. There are 215 million children engaged in child labor, with 115 million of those children in hazardous work. The rule of law is the legal principle that law should govern a nation, as opposed to being governed by arbitrary decisions of individual government officials. Justice should not be denied to anyone, as it is a basic human right. That's why Target 16.3 aims to promote the rule of law at the national and international levels and ensure equal access to justice for all. Target 16.4 By 2030, significantly reduce illicit financial and arms flows, and strengthen the recovery and return of stolen assets, as well as combat all forms of organized crime. The black market trade in small arms and light weapons today sustains bloody conflicts around the world and arms criminals, terrorists, and drug traffickers. As a result, large areas of the world have become extremely dangerous for civilians, 
relief and development workers, business people, and peacekeepers. Target 16.5, substantially reduce corruption and bribery in all their forms. Instances of corruption around the world are reported on almost a daily basis. There is no scarcity of scandals that illustrate the depth and pervasiveness of corruption, the shady funding of political parties in Europe and North America, bribes to high-level officials for major export contracts in many countries. In the wake of these scandals, awareness has grown about the social, political, and economic costs of corruption, which no country can afford. It erodes public confidence in political institutions and leads to contempt for the rule of law. It distorts the allocation of resources, inflates spending on public procurement, and undermines competition in the marketplace. It has a devastating effect on investment, growth, and development. Furthermore, corruption exacts an inordinately high price on the poor by denying them access to vital basic services. This leads us to transparency. Target 16.6 wants to develop effective, accountable, and transparent institutions at all levels. Transparency is about shedding light on rules, plans, processes, and actions. It is knowing why, how, what, and how much. Transparency ensures that public officials, civil servants, managers, board members, and business people act visibly and understandably and report on their activities. And it means that the general public can hold them to account. It is the surest way of guarding against corruption and helps increase trust in the people and institutions on which our futures depend. Target 16.7 Ensure decision-making at all levels that is responsive, inclusive, participatory, and representative. Responsive decision-making will make decisions in response to the data available. Inclusive decisions involve all stakeholders at all levels of involvement. Participatory decision-making means that these stakeholders engage with the decision-makers in some way throughout the process. The decisions that are made must be representative of all the stakeholders in the population. Target 16.8 Broaden and strengthen the participation of developing countries in the institutions of global governance. Intergovernmental cooperation is at the center of the Global Partnership for Development. It has a vital role to play in the achievement of global development goals in terms not only of the resources and technical assistance it can provide, but also in the areas of policy decision-making and norm-setting. While developing countries must abide by and or shoulder the effects of global governance rules and regulations, they have limited influence in shaping them. Target 16.9 By 2030, provide legal identity for all, including birth registration, Modern civil registries and identification systems are powerful tools in the fight against poverty, social exclusion, and inequality. Identity management systems are key to improving public sector policies and delivering better public and private services. Above all, they help ensure that individuals can access their civic and legal rights. Target 16.10 Ensure public access to information and protect fundamental freedoms in accordance with national legislation and international agreements. The case for ensuring access to information is that it supports good governance, effective and efficient public administration, compliance with laws and regulations, and efforts to combat corruption and better investment climates. Target 16A strengthen relevant national institutions, including through international cooperation, for building capacity at all levels, in particular in developing countries, to prevent violence and combat terrorism and crime. We have already discussed how important it is to prevent violence and combat terrorism for developing countries and everyone around the world. Target 16b goes back to the inclusive nature of the SDGs as a whole and aims to promote and enforce non-discriminatory laws and policies for sustainable development worldwide. World peace can seem like a lofty goal, 
but we can take steps as citizens in order to make sure it happens. Be sure to take a genuine interest in what your government is doing to protect peace and raise awareness in your communities about the realities of conflict and the importance of peaceful and just societies. You can also take action in your community through the help of schools, clubs, teams, and organizations that promote peace and justice. An example of this could be to volunteer at a refugee relief organization. Finally, we've reached Goal 17, strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. The Sustainable Development Goals are a pretty big to-do list, don't you think? In fact, it's so big, you may just want to throw your hands up in the air and say, forget it, it can't be done, why even try? But we've got a lot going for us. The world is more interconnected today than ever before, thanks to the internet, travel, and global institutions. There's a growing consensus about the need to work together to stop climate change. And the Sustainable Development Goals are no small matter either. 193 countries agreed on these goals. Pretty incredible, isn't it? 193 countries agreeing on anything? The final goal lays out a way for nations to work together to achieve all the other goals. Finance Target 17.1 Strengthen domestic resource mobilization, including through international support to developing countries, to improve domestic capacity for tax and other revenue collection. Domestic Resource Mobilization, or DRM, involves increasing the flow of taxes and other income into government treasuries, which is key to achieving the ambitious SDGs. Yet the World Bank Group's client countries, who are most in need of revenues to ensure the provision of basic services and to reduce poverty, often face steep challenges collecting taxes. Finance Target 17.2 developed countries to implement fully their official development assistance commitments, including the commitment by many developed countries to achieve the target of 0.7% of ODA GNI, or official development assistance to gross national income, to developing countries, and 0.15 to 0.2% of ODA GNI to least developed countries. ODA providers are encouraged to consider setting a target to provide at least 0.2% of ODA GNI to least developed countries. Official development assistance to gross national income is basically what a country spends on development assistance with a focus on the promotion of economic development in developing countries. This target sets a goal for developed countries to give at least 0.7% of their income to development assistance of developing countries. Finance Target 17.3 Mobilize additional financial resources for developing countries from multiple sources. Developing countries must mobilize domestic resources for development. National budgets contain potential for savings and redistribution. Governments can make additional resources available for sustainable development by reforming their tax systems and eliminating harmful subsidies and unproductive expenses. Finance Target 17.4 Assist developing countries in attaining long-term debt sustainability through coordinated policies aimed at fostering debt financing, debt relief, and debt restructuring, and address the external debt of highly indebted poor countries to reduce debt distress. Debt has crippled many developing countries, often based on loans taken out by prior rulers and dictators Millions face poorer and poorer living standards as precious resources are diverted to debt repayment. Finding alternatives to repay these debts, including through financing, relief, and restructuring, can pave the way for sustainable development. Finance Target 17.5 Adopt and implement investment promotion regimes for least developed countries. An investment promotion agency or regime is most often a government agency or occasionally a nonprofit organization functioning similarly to a chamber of commerce or business consulting corporation whose mission is to attract investment to a country, state, region, or city. Technology Target 
enhance north-south, south-south, and triangular regional and international cooperation on and access to science, technology, and innovation, and enhance knowledge sharing on mutually agreed terms including through improved coordination among existing mechanisms, in particular at the United Nations level, and through a global technology facilitation mechanism. South-South cooperation can be defined as an exchange of knowledge and resources in the political, economic, social, cultural, environmental, or technical domain between governments, organizations, individuals, and developing nations. It can take place on a bilateral, regional, sub-regional, or inter-regional basis and can involve two or more developing countries. North-North cooperation is this same cooperation between developed countries. Triangular cooperation involves two or more developing countries in collaboration with a third party, typically a developed country government or organization contributing to the exchanges with its own knowledge and resources. Technology Target 17.7 Promote the development, transfer, dissemination, and diffusion of environmentally sound technologies to developing countries on favorable terms, including on concessional and preferential terms, as mutually agreed. No less than a technological revolution, both in the development of new technologies and in enhancing access to existing technologies by developing countries, is necessary to enable action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and adapt to the adverse effects of climate change. Technology cooperation can create win-win outcomes that help both developed and developing countries reduce the cost of tackling climate change while also stimulating opportunities for sustainable development. Technology Target 17.8 fully operationalize the technology bank and science, technology, and innovation capacity building mechanism for least developed countries by 2017. Enhance the use of enabling technology, in particular information and communications technology. The establishment of the technology bank is expected to be the first target of the SDGs to be met. It is an international technology transfer organization enabling tech transfer between the least developed countries. The Technology Bank, for its part, will have three distinct goals. Firstly, it will operate a patent bank, enabling the least developed countries to negotiate access to IP. Secondly, it will work towards creating the necessary ecosystems and establish incubators. Finally, it will offer researchers in the target countries access to scientific literature and build networks. Capacity Building Target 17.9 Enhance international support for implementing effective and targeted capacity building in developing countries to support national plans to implement all the sustainable development goals, including through North-South, South-South, and triangular cooperation. We have heard much about capacity building in these goals. Capacity building is a conceptual approach to social or personal development that focuses on understanding the obstacles that inhibit people, governments, international organizations, and non-governmental organizations from realizing their development goals, while enhancing the abilities that will allow them to achieve measurable and sustainable results. Trade Target 17.10 Promote a universal, rules-based, open, non-discriminatory, and equitable multilateral trading system under the World Trade Organization including through the conclusion of negotiations under its Doha development agenda. Trade openness can help efforts to mitigate and adapt to climate change, for example, by promoting an efficient allocation of the world's resources, including natural resources, raising standards of living, and improving access to environmental goods and services. Trade Target 1711 significantly increase the exports of developing countries, in particular with a view to doubling the least developed countries' share of global exports by 2020. Many developing countries have substantially increased their exports of manufacturers and services relative to traditional commodity exports. Manufacturers have risen to 80% of developing country exports. Moreover, trade between developing countries has grown rapidly, 
with 40% of their exports now going to other developing countries. However, the poorest countries have seen their share of world trade decline substantially, and without lowering their own barriers to trade, they risk further marginalization. Trade Target 17.12 Realize timely implementation of duty-free and quota-free market access on a lasting basis for all least developed countries. Consistent with World Trade Organization decisions, and including by ensuring that preferential rules of origin applicable to imports from least developed countries are transparent and simple and contribute to facilitating market access. Several developed and transition economies, including some of the major markets for least developed countries' exports, have given duty-free and quota-free market access for all or almost all exports from least developed countries. They include Canada, the Czech Republic, the EU, Hungary, New Zealand, Norway, the Slovak Republic, and Switzerland. Systemic Issues, Political and Institutional Coherence, Target 17.13 Enhance global macroeconomic stability, including through policy coordination and policy coherence. Macroeconomic stability is the cornerstone of any successful effort to increase private sector development and economic growth. Policy coordination and coherence will be essential to achieving this essential target. Policy and Institutional Coherence Target 17.14 Enhance Policy Coherence for Sustainable Development Policy coherence is defined by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development as the systematic promotion of mutually reinforcing policy actions across government departments and agencies, creating synergies toward achieving this agreed objective. Policy and Institutional Coherence Target 17.15 Respect each country's policy space and leadership to establish and implement policies for poverty eradication and sustainable development. Multi-Stakeholder Partnerships, Target 17.16 Enhance the global partnership for sustainable development, complemented by multi-stakeholder partnerships that mobilize and share knowledge, expertise, technology, and financial resources to support the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals in all countries, in particular developing countries. A successful Sustainable Development Agenda requires partnerships between governments, the private sector, and civil society. These inclusive partnerships, built upon principles and values, a shared vision, and shared goals that place people and the planet at the center, are needed at the global, regional, national, and local levels. Multi-Stakeholder Partnerships Target 17.17 Encourage and promote effective public, public-private, and civil society partnerships, building on the experience and resourcing strategies of partnerships. Public partnerships exist between governments. A public-private partnership is a government service or private business venture that is funded and operated through a partnership of government and one or more private sector companies. Civil society partnerships may be formal or informal, and they work with a broad range of political, legal, economic, social, and cultural contexts. They do not represent a unified social force or a coherent set of values. They are as diverse as the people and issues around which they organize. Some examples of civil society partnerships include international and national NGOs, community-based organizations, faith-based organizations, advocacy groups, trade unions, women's groups, foundations, social networks, and think tanks and research institutes. Data Monitoring and Accountability Target 17.18 By 2020, enhance capacity building support to developing countries, including for least developed countries and small island developing states. In order to increase significantly the availability of high-quality, timely, and reliable data disaggregated by income, gender, age, race, ethnicity, migratory status, disability, geographic location, and other characteristics relevant in national contexts. 
there remains a gap between the availability of development data and the ability of people to use that data. This target aims to overcome obstacles driven by poor quality or a low quantity of data. Data Monitoring and Accountability Target 17.19 by 2030, build on existing initiatives to develop measurements of progress on sustainable development that complement gross domestic product and support statistical capacity building in developing countries. Indicators have been developed for the SDGs and are continually improved so as to gain the most accurate data for their respective goals. A monitoring framework is in place as well. To view some of the existing indicators, visit www.indicators.report. What can we do in order to create meaningful partnerships for the goals? Join or create a group in your local community seeking to mobilize action on the SDGs and encourage your government to partner with businesses for the implementation of these goals. The SDGs Partnership Platform was built to inform, educate, network, and be inspired by other partnerships sustained by businesses and individuals for the goals. The SDGs will require participation from all stakeholders, large and small. That means me and you. Goals this broad and comprehensive will require the cooperation of governments, businesses, and pretty much anyone else that lives, works, and plays on the earth. Let's go over some of the ways each group of stakeholders can do their part. For governments, appoint a project lead for progression of the SDGs at the highest political level. Colombia has decided to align their national development plan with the SDGs and ensure they are advancing the three pillars of sustainable development in everything they do. Engage parliaments or cabinets in implementation and policymaking. Pakistan has transformed its parliament on the Millennium Development Goals Task Force to one for the Sustainable Development Goals. Forge partnerships with civil society, the private sector, and others in order to implement and monitor progress. Peru is developing a system of participatory monitoring to ensure accountability at the national level and is proposing a decree to institutionalize follow-up on the SDGs. Governments can also make commitments on financing and the means of implementation. The United States has committed $15 million to the Global Financing Facility to support the scaling up of national strategies and efforts to end preventable child and maternal death in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. Map any existing data and measurement capacity and put systems in place for measurement. Denmark determined that approximately one quarter of the current targets could be measured and one-third of them will require new measurement systems. Have the head of state or government speak to domestic constituents regarding the SDGs. The Chancellor of Germany made a speech to Parliament on national implementation of the SDGs ahead of the UN Sustainable Development Summit. Governments can also engage something called first partners to take on aspects of the agenda who are advocates on specific causes first appointed in the Millennium Development Goals era. Ethiopia's Office of the First Lady partnered with government ministries and NGOs in order to empower girls and women to develop entrepreneurial skills and provide basic training to connect them to the market. Governments should also collaborate and share lessons learned from the SDGs. This will require conferences with national leaders from all different parts of the world periodically. Additionally, they can host a national-level multi-stakeholder dialogue. Sweden organized a multi-stakeholder conference in January 2016 to mark the starting point of implementing the 2030 Agenda. Finally, governments can integrate the SDGs into existing national plans. Bangladesh has already identified nine of the 17 goals in its five-year comprehensive plan. Businesses and corporations can help in a number of ways as well. 
they can lead economic growth through open global trade. This will need to be supported by governments. Additionally, businesses will need to place a focus on equity of pay up and down the value chain and pay equality for women. Some questions to be asked are how much goes to taxes versus shareholders, and do developing countries get a fair deal in negotiations? Any science should be applied from a local perspective. Learn cultural challenges and agricultural ways from all over the world. Think long-term rather than short-term about different ways to do business, different buyers, ROIs, different partners, etc. We need markets that work for everyone, not just a few. Businesses can also reinvest profits into sustainable solutions. For example, pharmaceutical company GSK has committed to a 20% reinvestment from profits made in least developed countries to go back to the same countries for health infrastructure. They can also take proactive roles in education in order to create shared value in raising educational performance levels, shaping aspirations, and creating a more productive workforce. A recognizable signature global flagship program could definitely help to focus on the specifics of the SDGs. For example, P&G introduced the Children's Safe Drinking Water Campaign in order to invest in clean drinking water for developing countries. Since 2004, the campaign has delivered over 9 billion liters of water. Increase investment in sustainable energy sources, including wind, hydro, geothermal, etc. Alternatively, you can also purchase renewable energy certificates for your business. In order to promote ethical business practices, place and enforce strict supplier codes of conduct through all tiers of the supply chain with continual monitoring programs. Place a focus on providing quality jobs, training, and the skills necessary for professional development. Look into providing programs that encourage empowerment in the workforce for the socially disadvantaged, including women and the disabled. Place an emphasis on your company's physical buildings and their sustainability. How can energy and water be saved? Would an energy management system for the building be beneficial? Some advice you may not have heard before is don't call it green. Break away from the niche green market. Mainstreaming a sustainable lifestyle does not necessarily mean labeling everything as sustainable. In order for it to be sustainable, make it easy, desirable, understood, rewarding, and a habit. Instead of just lowering your carbon emissions, have a new goal to be net positive. Check out Dell and Ikea's goal to have their products do 10 times more good in the world than their footprint. Oftentimes, it is difficult for companies to connect with the truly poor and disadvantaged. Companies need a way to judge and quantify their contribution to global development and work to improve it if necessary. Building professionals, such as architects, engineers, designers, contractors, and vendors, also have a role to play in the Sustainable Development Goals. The major focus for this group will be on SDG 11, or Sustainable Cities and Communities. Architects and designers can serve as ambassadors of the SDGs through their daily work and through transmission of knowledge from their practice into local marketplaces and communities. Building professionals can incorporate social and environmental factors as a core part of the design strategy. For example, Glenn Mercutt, a Pritzker laureate, has worked extensively on how to design environmentally sensitive houses that respond to their surroundings and to climate change. Place a focus on involving the public in large-scale building processes and decisions, rather than relying strictly on government action and the housing market. Alejandro Alavena of Chile is the 2016 Pritzker Laureate and has great advice for building professionals looking to advance the SDGs. 
He states, it's a mistake to think that if the problem is big, the solution must also be big. Solutions for climate change, waste management, migration, can be engaged by specific architectural designs. A fuller range of alternative financing schemes is necessary to address the constraints on public funding and commercial debt in the building industry. Technology and data analytics can also be leveraged to improve project quality and a greater certainty of outcome. Information technologies and data should not only be used to operate cities more efficiently and sustainably, but also to help advance planning, conceptual design and engineering, and construction. On a more physical level, incorporating low-impact building materials, including recycled and repurposed resources, has the potential to help combat climate change. Building using modular construction helps as well. Proper planning for construction and demolition site waste programs can save tons of waste from going into landfills and hazardous materials such as drywall from leaking into the water supply. People just like you and me can get informed and stay informed about all the issues facing us and the planet today. Watch this informative TED Talk on what it will really take to achieve the SDGs. Education is better together. Educate your family, friends, and colleagues about the goals. Spread the word. Social media has a bigger impact than you may think. Volunteer your time and skills as much as you are able. A lack of skills in any organization can provide a barrier to upward mobility. Donate labor, accounting skills, you name it, to organizations in need in your area. You can also give your money. Visit globalgiving.org to select the goal you care most about and donate directly to vetted organizations working to make that SDG a reality. As you may have already picked up on, simplifying your life and living within your means is a great way to help achieve the SDGs. Remember overconsumption? Check out these websites, Good Guide and the Think Dirty app, to see how the products you use affect the world around you. You can also encourage your employer to get involved in some of the ways we have discussed for businesses. You may be thinking that all of those tips sound a little too hard. How else can you help to achieve the SDGs? There are quite a few things you can do just from sitting on your couch. Save electricity by plugging appliance into a power strip and turning them off completely when not in use, including your computer. Stop paper bank statements and pay your bills online or via mobile. No paper, no need for forest destruction. Share, don't just like. If you see an interesting social media post about women's rights or climate change, share it so folks in your network see it too. Speak up. Ask your local and national authorities to engage in initiatives that don't harm people or the planet. Turn off the lights. Your TV or computer screen provides a cozy glow, so turn off the lights if you don't need them. Do a bit of online research and buy only from companies that you know have sustainable practices and don't harm the environment. Report online bullies. If you notice harassment on a message board or in a chat room, flag that person. Stay informed. Follow your local news and stay in touch with the Global Goals online or on social media at at Global Goals UN. Tell us about your actions to achieve the Global Goals by using the hashtag Global Goals on social networks. Offsite your carbon emissions. You can calculate your carbon footprint and purchase climate credit from Climate Neutral Now. Here are some things you can do in your own house. Air dry. Let your hair and clothes dry naturally instead of running a machine. If you do watch your clothes, make sure the load is full. Take short showers. Bathtubs require gallons more water than a five to 10 minute shower. Eat less meat, poultry, and fish. More resources are used to provide meat than plants. And freeze fresh produce and leftovers if you don't have the chance to eat them before they go bad. You can also do this with takeaway or delivered food 
if you know you will not feel like eating it the next day. This will save you food and money. Look into composting. Composting food scraps can reduce climate impact while also recycling nutrients. Recycling paper, plastic, glass, and aluminum keeps landfills from growing. Buy minimally packaged goods. And avoid preheating the oven. Unless you need a precise baking temperature, start heating your food right when you turn on the oven. Plug any air leaks in your windows and doors in order to increase energy efficiency. Adjust your thermostat, lower in winter and higher in summer. Replace old appliances with energy efficient models and light bulbs. If you have the option, install solar panels in your house. This will also reduce your electricity bill. Get a rug. Carpets and rugs keep your house warm and your thermostat low. Don't rinse. If you use a dishwasher, stop rinsing your plates before you run the machine. Choose a better diaper option. Swaddle your baby in cloth diapers or a new, environmentally responsible, disposable brand. Shovel snow manually. Avoid the noisy, exhaust-churning snowblower and get some exercise. Use cardboard matches. They don't require any petroleum, unlike plastic gas-filled lighters. Shop local. Supporting neighborhood businesses keeps people employed and helps prevent trucks from driving far distances. Shop smart. Plan meals, use shopping lists, and avoid impulse buys. Don't succumb to marketing tricks that lead you to buy more food than you need, particularly for perishable items. Though these may be less expensive per ounce, they can be more expensive overall if much of that food is discarded. Buy funny fruit. Many fruits and vegetables are thrown out because of their shape, size, or color. Buying these perfectly good funny fruit at the farmer's market or elsewhere utilizes food that might otherwise go to waste. When you go to a restaurant and are ordering seafood, always ask, do you serve sustainable seafood? Let your favorite businesses know that ocean-friendly seafood is on your shopping list. Shop only for sustainable seafood. There are now many apps that will tell you what is safe to consume. Bike, walk, or take public transport. Save the car trips for when you've got a big group. Use a refillable water bottle and coffee cup. Cut down on waste and maybe even save money at the coffee shop. Bring your own bag when you shop. Pass on the plastic bag and start carrying your own reusable totes. Take fewer napkins. You don't need a handful of napkins to eat your takeout. Take just what you need. Shop vintage. Brand new isn't necessarily best. See what you can repurpose from secondhand shops. Maintain your car. A well-tuned car will emit fewer toxic fumes. Finally, here's some things you can do outside your house. Donate what you don't use. Local charities will give your gently used clothes, books, and furniture a new life. Vaccinate yourself and your kids. Protecting your family from disease also aids public health. Finally, take advantage of your right to elect the leaders in your country and local community. This concludes part three of the series. Thank you again, Sarah, for your research and presentation. Just like the previous part, I hope you found this session informative and engaging. Listed here are the learning objectives we shared in the beginning of this session. By now, all of us have a solid understanding of sustainable development goals and what role we could play. As you know by now, each of these 17 goals represent an issue important in today's world. GBRI's goal is to reach out to as many people as possible with this course so that they are at least aware of it. We urge you to share the link to this course among your friends and contacts whom you believe will benefit beyond the CEOs. If they have a USGBC course subscription, they could watch the course on this platform. If they don't, this course is also available for free on a few websites including GBRI, YouTube and I believe. I have listed the links on this slide as well as in the comments. So what's next? 
please don't let your learning and engagement stop with the CE credit you get out of this course. As Sarah mentioned, there are ways you and I could participate to address each of the issues we went over in part 1, 2, and 3. We have a few options. Report the CE hours, go home, and everything happens as normal, and assume this is not our problem. Option 2 is to give it some thought and stay engaged. By 2030, do you want this world to be a better place than how it is now? Or do you want it to be worse? Most of the folks my age would be at least 50 years by 2030. And I would want the world to be at least as nice as it is today, if not better. Apart from all the action items Sarah went over, you also have an opportunity to be ambassador and join us to educate about the goals you consider important, such as poverty, hunger, or gender equality. In addition to being engaged on the social media, you can also participate in a hands-on project in your community, start a new one, or donate. I personally think donation is the easiest way and sometimes that might not be the most effective way, effective use of your money. By donation, I meant donating, donating your money. You never know how the money being donated is spent. Here are a couple of links where you can learn more ideas and projects related to sustainable development goals. Please rate this course, post your comments, ideas and suggestions so that we all stay informed and involved. As mentioned in the beginning of this series, this course is brought to you by GBRI and I Believe. GBRI, as many of you may already know, is an AIA education provider and USGPC education partner. I Believe is a non-profit organization based out of the US, founded with the belief that every individual, including you and me, has the power to make a difference in the societies we live in, working towards a sustainable future be it in the East or in the West. Its mission is to inspire and empower individuals to donate their efforts, time or money to local projects they care about, be it helping fellow human beings, conserving the environment or protecting animals. This course series is one among many educational programs developed as part of a campaign titled Change Begins With Me. You may learn more about this campaign on the GBRI or iBelieve.org websites. Thank you once again.